In this last video, we will look at the integration of these serious games into existing teaching curriculums and also what that looks like if you have to collaborate in an entire team in game development. We take a look at the expertise needed for bringing a serious game to life from concept to reality and also what that collaboration looks like from the scientific component onto the game developer side. And of course, after you've watched this video, don't forget to just go out, play the game and see for yourself if this is something worthwhile for you to invest in. It's just one more tool we, we give to them uh, to train for the lab uh, before going to a real cell culture lab. It's good for them to look at the game, play with the game a couple of times or see what we are going to do in the lab and then they will jump into the lab with some knowledge. And then in the lab, they will experience how to use the equipment. Because of course, we are aware that uh, they will not learn how to use a micropipe just playing in the game. The advantage of this game is imagine if we, hopefully not, but if we would end up again in a pandemic and there's no way of letting them experience it hands-on in the lab. You can start first, of course, with giving them some background knowledge via lectures or via uh, the online cell culture tool that we created. And then this game can be an add-on. So then they can real life uh, experience it, although they will not uh, learn, like Amaya said, to use the tools. They will not learn how to pipe it or how to probably use the centrifuge, but they can start thinking about it. So they create a way of critically thinking about how to plan their cell culture uh, in real life over several days. And it's already good if they already have this way of critical thinking about safety, about planning uh, a cell culture. That's an extra add-on from when then hopefully the pandemic is over and we go back to the real lab. Then they have already this critical thinking and then they can focus on acquiring the skills to use the equipment and to use the tools. Okay, from my point of view of, of developer, I think we need uh, more hands to code, okay? And uh, I think what really uh, is difficult, what was difficult for me, was the design of, of the assets. And so I think if we had uh, someone which is specialized on designing assets and graphic for a game, it will help and really help a lot of uh, being more quick on the game development. I know, I, I think that if you really want to go for a serious game, you should have a scientist in the team. Yeah, I, I think it's not to, to send me flowers, <laughs> but the fact that I know how to, to deal with cells already, uh, with the virtual practical also, uh, helps me a lot of all the problems uh, I encounter in the, in the, yeah, in the game absolutely. development. And of course, on top of that, you need someone to manage the whole thing to make sure that there's the proper communication between the developers and the scientists and to make sure that, for instance, the development of this game was on track and going as planned. Uh, Sabine and I, as uh, the scientists of this team, uh, we were there together with Antoine, so we were all the time in communication. We had several meetings. Um, we check the game. We play with the game. So it was, I think, the, the key word here is communication. Yeah, maybe also next to communication, uh, trying out, uh, because, of course, we can tell Antoine we need to defrost cells. And how do you do that to start a cell culture? And then we can explain a bit. We showed him... Uh, of course, he saw from the cell culture practical pictures of, of how it looks in real life. And then as an example, he nicely recreated a, a tank with uh, liquid nitrogen. So to recreate these real life experiences, yeah, we had to try out, but also explain in a good way, in a visual way, what do we want? And then Antoine could say to us, okay, this is how we can recreate it. By doing this for every step of the cell culture protocol, we make sure that we keep the learning goals so that they really get the chance to go through all the steps within the game to, to make sure they get the whole learning experience. 
to make a uh, actual version of the game really like a really finished product we have to extensively test the game uh, because it's a, a real um, job to be tester okay in in development and it's not the same person because when i develop something i know or uh, oh, i i have done it so I'm not aware of the possible mistakes or bad order people will do. Sometimes I I, I have no idea. Uh, they have clicked on that button before, but it makes no sense. But maybe sometimes there are still some bugs where I have not think about every possible cases of what will happen when someone will will play it. And that's why you you have um, some method of testing. Uh, which name is, for example, monkey testing. It's from Netflix company, where you put uh, uh, like a virtual monkey in your program, and the virtual monkey will click everywhere in 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 a not natural human way. Okay, it will click everywhere and test, and so that way you can um, manage to catch every bugs there are still in the application because I think we still have some little bugs to correct, which is perfectly normal in, in a program like that. But I think we need to deeply test it uh, and to redesign the graphics to have a perfectly commercial game. That's the name. If you want a commercial name, uh, game, we have to, to do that. <laughs>